Hey guys, what is going on? Hope you are doing well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about both batteries as well as the chargers that charge up our batteries. More specifically, we're gonna be looking at the acronym CC slash CV, which also can be represented as just CCCV. Either way, it means the exact same thing. Let's not waste any further time and jump right into what exactly this represents for us and our batteries and chargers. CC slash CV is a charging method that is used for all the popular RC batteries that we use today. If you have a charger that uses any of these common battery packs, you can guarantee that your charger has this capability and you use it every time you're charging those batteries. The acronym CC stands for constant current, where CV stands for constant voltage. Both of these are actually happening in one charging cycle. Now, each one of them are happening at two different time periods within that one charge cycle. And we'll be able to see this very shortly within the video. So essentially, what battery chemistries use this specific charging method? Well, like we said at the very beginning of the video, all of our common batteries that are used in RC. This includes our LiPo batteries that are used essentially anywhere that we have a brushless motor. We got lithium ion batteries that use this same charging method as well as the LiFi packs and even the batteries that are in your car, those lead acid batteries. Now moving on to the next part of the video where we're looking at what is exactly required from us or the charger in order to perform this type of charge. Essentially, it comes down to requiring two different parameters. One is the charge rate, which is typically provided by the user, but it does not necessarily have to be provided by the user. The charger will default to charging at a rate of 1C. Then the next item here is the maximum voltage per cell. A lithium polymer battery pack, this is why this is circled. We're gonna be looking at specifically lithium polymer battery packs throughout the example today. So in our case, we're looking at the LiPo battery pack. We're gonna assume a constant charge of five amps and we're gonna have a maximum peak voltage per cell at 4.2 volts. Now that we know this type of information, we can then take it and plot it onto a graph so that we can see exactly how this works in a much more simplified form. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph that I've drawn out here. So on the Y axis on the left side in red, we have voltage. This is representing the voltage of a cell within the pack. We see values from 2.8 to 4.2. This is 4.20 where we have our maximum cell voltage. Now in our example for today, we're gonna to be starting off at about 3.40 volts per cell. I would highly recommend that if you're using a lithium polymer battery pack that you don't discharge it to this level. If you do, you are permanently decreasing the lifespan of that battery pack so that it may not last you years and years and years of use. So now let's take a look at the right hand Y axis. This is going to be where we have current being represented and I've drawn this in blue. Now that we have both of our Y axes defined and we understand the units we're dealing with there, our X axis is simply just time. Over a period of time, this could be minutes, seconds, hours, whatever you want. So let's take a look now at exactly what our graph looks like. We have that voltage sitting at 3.4 volts and then you can see we get to this point where the charge is started. This is you on your charger, you're starting to initiate that charge. What you've done already is input all the values and your charger knows how fast you want to charge that pack. Here we're charging a 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack at 1C. This is gonna be five amps and we're gonna to start to charge that pack. Now looking at voltage only, we see slowly the voltage is going to start to increase. Now everything on this diagram has been done with straight lines. This is a very simplistic approach to show exactly what happens. Not all of these lines are done in a linear fashion. So here we can see the voltage starts to climb from 3.4 volts all the way to our 4.2 volts. This is the maximum. If we did not have this maximum set within our charger, we could guarantee that the voltage of this cell would continue to increase even after it gets up to its maximum that it is capable of handling safely. 
Once that battery cell ends up hitting the 4.2 volts, it pretty well stays there for the rest of the charge where the charge is actually terminated, where you see this green dashed line. Now when we look at the current, we have our pack getting all connected up and here's where we initiate our charge. We go from zero amps all the way to our five amp target this is our goal that we set up in our charger to charge at five amps we're going to charge at five amps until this point and then from that point we end up slowly ramping down all the way to zero amps of charge and as soon as it comes close to around zero amps some chargers use a formula to calculate a certain percentage of the initial charge rate. Once it hits that percentage charge rate, then it is terminating the charge and is considering that the battery is fully charged up to 100%. So in this case, we have voltage going up, it's maxing out, hitting 4.2 volts, and then you have the current that starts to decrease. So now if we go and break this down into a more simple looking diagram, this is where we're only taking the top section of our diagram, where the blue line here is current, just like we have it up on our diagram above. And the black color is representing our charge voltage, which has been represented on the above diagram in black as well. This diagram is placed up here on the board to illustrate the constant current specific area as well as the constant voltage specific area. In the first part of this diagram here below, we have a straight line representing our constant current as we saw in the diagram above. And then once we end up having the battery saturate, meaning that it gets up to its maximum voltage, it can barely hold more energy, we end up transitioning into what is known as the constant voltage phase of the charging cycle and this is going to be held all the way until that battery reaches a hundred percent state of charge so that's essentially how this constant current constant voltage is working within our chargers at a fairly simplified form now let's take a look at a couple of advantages as well as a disadvantage of this specific charging method. The first advantage that we have here is that you're able to charge a battery at a relatively fast charging rate. This means that we're very capable of handling all different types of charging rates with this specific charging method. We can charge batteries typically from anywhere on 1C rates all the way up to 5C rates if our battery is able to accept and handle that charging rate. Always make sure you're taking a look at your battery manufacturer's instruction sheet that comes with it to be certain of the maximum charging rate you're able to use. We also have no risk of overcharging a battery using this specific method. We're not gonna go beyond 4.20 volts, which could damage the pack using this charging rate. Our charger using this method is designed to make sure that the voltage never exceeds that maximum voltage. And if that is true, we will never overcharge our packs. The last item that we have here under advantages is we're able to determine the state of charge within our charging cycle. I can quickly just glance at my charger and see if it's on the ramp down cycle at that point. I'm talking about this region of the charging cycle. I know that once I reach this point, I don't have that much longer left to go within my charging cycle. This is true for most battery chemistries that we are using. Not all battery chemistries can you tell the exact state of charge based off of this ramp up voltage within the charger. Now let's take a look at some disadvantage here that we have written up on the board. Simply put, older or tired batteries do end up charging slower. Now I'm not gonna get into the specifics of that within this video. I am going to save a further discussion on this for a future video. That pretty well covers everything that I wanted to talk about to simply introduce the idea of CC slash CV charging methods. I hope you were able to learn something within this video as always like the video if you do don't forget to hit that sub button so that i can see you in that next video thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one